So recently there's been a lot of talk in the Tiki community about recreating old rums. And one topic that always comes up is Martinique rum. And whether or not we should be using the Martinique rum that is available to us today or something different. So with that in mind, today we're going to be mixing up a few three dots and a dash, doing a side-by-side -side comparison and seeing which one I like better. So let's do this. So to kick things off, let's talk about the Martinique rum that we get today. And that's rum, as in R-H-U-M, not rum, R-U-M, or Ron, R-O-N, as it's known elsewhere in the world. Now, why the H? Well, the French did it to differentiate themselves from the rest of the rum being produced in the world, much like the Irish did when they added the E to whiskey to set themselves apart from the Scottish. Now, while this video could be an entire deep dive into basically just cane juice spirits and cane juice rum in general, that video would be about 45 minutes long and I just don't have the attention span for that. So today we're going to be focusing on a specific rum from a specific island. So the rum that we're going to be talking about today is from the French Indies island of, well I mean I've already said it like three times, but here it is one more time, Martinique. Now, unlike other rums from around the world that are distilled from molasses, which is a byproduct of sugar making, Martinique rum today is made from fresh pressed sugarcane juice. Now, when a rum comes off the island of Martinique today, it is known as a rum agricole. And specifically, if it's produced in a certain way, gains the moniker AOC, which stands for some French term that I am not going to try to say because I would absolutely butcher it. In order to be called an AOC rum agricole, essentially, it needs to be distilled at about 70%. From there, it needs to be proofed down to about 40 to 55% and aged in oak barrels for a minimum of three months. Now, some agricoles are aged for upwards of three years. And when that happens, they gain the name Rum View or Old Rum. We know from old articles, journals, and notebooks that both Vic and Don used Martinique rums in their recipes. Vic used it in his mid to late 1950s Mai Tai, taking the traditional two ounce Jamaican rum base and splitting it between a one ounce of his branded Jamaican rum and one ounce of Martinique rum. We also saw Don use it in cocktails like the Donga Punch and the Three Dots in a Dash, which is what we'll be making today. Now we do know, thanks to an article about Matt Pietrick, that the rum coming off of the island in Martinique between the 1930s and the 1950s was not rum agricole like we have today. Now, cane juice spirits were distilled on the island. However, they were saved mostly for the locals. The major export was molasses-based rum. And in fact, this stuck until about the 1960s when cane juice spirits production outpaced molasses-based production and overtook it as the major export of the island. Now in that same article, it goes on to describe the flavor profile of rums coming off the island of Martinique during the 1930s and 50s. It goes on to say that the Martinique rums were heavy bodied, coffee colored, very similar to Jamaicans, but with a very slight burnt demerara flavor. Now that doesn't sound a lot like the light and grassy agricoles that we have coming off the island today. So this begs the question, for old school classic tiki cocktails, should we be using an agricole that we get today or something different? In fact, in that same article by Matt Pietrick, he goes on to suggest that if you want to create a donga punch or a three dots in a dash that is more in line with how it would be served in the 1930s and 40s, well, maybe you shouldn't be using a rum agricole after all, and instead should be using a slightly funky, caramel colored Jamaican rum, something like Karuba or Blackwell. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making two three dots in a dash side by side, one with Clement VSOP and one with a slightly funky caramel colored Jamaican rum. I'm going to be using Karuba today. We'll taste them side by side and see which one I like better. To make a three dots in a dash, you will need a Martinique rum or equivalent, an aged Demerara rum. I'm going with Hamilton 86. Honey syrup. This is a one to one honey syrup. Falernum. I'm going with the Bitter Truth Company. Allspice Dram. Also the Bitter Truth Company. Orange juice, lime juice, and aromatic bitters. Now I'm going to be building these side by side, so grab a shaking tin. In your shaking tin, add one dash of aromatic bitters. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lime juice. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of orange juice. Quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters of falernum. A quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters of allspice dram. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of honey syrup. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of aged Demerara rum. One and a half ounces or 45 milliliters of your Martinique rum or equivalent.
Now add six ounces of pebble ice, and we'll give it a whip shake for about five to eight seconds. Grab a chilled Collins glass and open pour in. Top with more pebble ice. Garnish with a pineapple frond and three cherries. Don't forget to serve with a straw. And then you have it, two versions of a three dots and a dash. One with an aged rum agricole, which is the type of Martinique rum we get today, versus one with a slightly funky caramel colored Jamaican rum, which is said to be more closely related to the Martinique rum that Don and Vic used to use. Let's give them a try. Okay, so before you go in and tell me, well, Andy, you picked a crappy cocktail for this because there's so many ingredients in this thing, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. You'd be wrong, because I can absolutely tell a difference. They're definitely two separate cocktails. Now, while they are similar, we get those spice notes from the allspice dram and the aromatic bitters. We're getting that clove and lime and ginger from the falernum. The orange juice disappears as is typical in a three dots. That's not anything new. Um, the lime juice is providing wonderful acidity to balance out the honey syrup. Speaking of which, I went with a one-to-one -one honey syrup because while asking some experts, I asked, which one would Don have used? And they said that it seems that he would have used a one-to-one -one honey syrup, so that's what I went with. But that's where things deviate. While those flavor profiles in both of these are the same, they differentiate at that point. This one is lighter. It definitely has that grassy note from the rum agricole. This one is darker. And there's this like burnt caramel flavor on the back end. Here's the deal. In the one with the aged rum agricole, the Clement VSOP, the agricole is front and center and the Demerara rum is lost. In this one, however, the Jamaican rum, the Karuba that I used, plays well with the Hamilton 86, the aged Demerara the rum that I used. They sing in harmony a little bit better. Let me see if I can give you a couple more flavor profiles here. Hold on one second. There's this grassy, musty, it is. The agricole is front and center on the back palate. If you've ever had rum agricole before, you know there's this like grassy, like musty note to it. And that's what I'm left with on my palate after drinking this cocktail. This one, on the other hand, honestly, I feel like it just harmonizes a little bit better. The flavors meld into each other much more seamlessly. This one, I'm getting waves of things. I'm getting the allspice, I'm getting the falernum, and then I'm getting the rum agricole. This one, everything just plays in harmony so well. The spices work really, really well with those dark notes from the Demerara rum and the Karuba. Now, before you ask if you don't have Karuba, uh, Matt Patrick also recommends Blackwells, which should be more readily available to a lot of people, so go with that one. So at the end of the day, what do I think? Do I think you should be making your three dots in a dash with aged rum agricole, or with a basically dark, slightly funky Jamaican rum? My personal preference? Go with the dark, slightly funky Jamaican rum. I like it better. But I'd actually love for you to do this taste test side by side. Let me know which rums you chose and which one you picked. Because this is just my version. This is just my palate. Your mileage may vary. And that's okay. That's what makes cocktails so awesome. What I like, you may not like. And what you may not like, I may love. And that's okay. We can agree to get disagree. Anyway, definitely drop a comment below. Let me know which one you prefer. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around to this point, congratulations. You get to know what we're gonna be taking a look at next week. And that is the classic Trader Vic cocktail, the Scorpion. And we're gonna be making a improved version on it because honestly, I just don't think it's very good. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Click that little notification bell so you know when I drop new videos, which is a short every Tuesday and a full video every Friday for the most part. Follow me over on Instagram at MixingUpTiki. And until next time, you know the deal. Macaulay Maluna. Now what am I going to do with these two cocktails? I've got two cocktails that I'm probably not going to drink and some cherries that I basically just wasted. But oh well, I'll probably eat the cherries and yeah, that'll be about it.